because if you look at most truck applications now, the front's down an inch, two inches, and it just sits better level. So we try to kind of show the comparison between something easy where you can just level out the truck, you don't have to worry anything about the back. Then we went into the installation of the spindle that will give you a true four inch. And what we've done on our spindles is we've actually manufactured them so you can fit that stock tire and wheel and put a larger tire on that if need be. On the F-150, we worked on two different kind of applications in the front. We did leveling kit, which are the aluminum spacers that go on top of the strut, and then we did a forward spindle. Both have advantages and disadvantages, uh, mostly in overall cost. Generally, the cheaper the, the lift is, you know, you're going to sacrifice some of your ride quality and uh, suspension travel. And then the other type of lift is a spindle lift which basically relocates the wheel hub down several inches to uh, lift the body up, gives you more clearance, uh, retains most of the factory stock ride. But the drawback to that is that it's just a lot more expensive. They're bigger cast pieces, cost more to make, more in material. Some of the difference between the leveling kits and the spindles. We'll start with the two-wheel drive. All you're doing is dropping the hub and the caliper. These will fit on the two wheel drives at no problem. A four wheel drive, you gotta remember, there's an axle going through that hub. So you really cannot put that spindle on it and the drive axle for the front four wheel drive fit through. At that point, you would have to go into like a leveling kit. Leveling kit on the F-150s, you got from one inch to three inches on the F-150s. So you can get a little bit of lift out of that. Also, you have people that just put a leveling kit on it, which we offer. That's all. They don't want larger tires on it. They don't want to go big where they have to change the gears. They just want it level. Not loose. Make sure you keep it on. When we smack it, if you're missing, you won't hit the threads and you won't jack them up. So I always keep the nut on. Ready? Got lucky there. A lot of times it takes longer. This will come loose once we drop this down. Bring the nut down to about right here, right here in the ball joint. You see the thing? Like so. So we're gonna leave that there for now. Start working on the bottom. Studs go through or pressed into the T-bar of the strut. Nuts are down here on the bottom side of the control arm. That's what holds it to the control arm. Free farm right there. Stress gonna come right out. Ready? One person. See, if you're doing it on jack stands, put your foot on the pry bar. Hold the pry bar to hold the control arm down. Proper procedure is to put this end in a vise and torque it to specs. We don't have a specs. You can take the pry bar. Basically, it's leverage. You torque your space out. So when you're doing these leveling kits, the front top of the strut has a certain, what they call clock position. When you put the kit, you can't have that stud just sit in the same spot. So you have to turn the strut from this factory to this, which clocks it 180 out. So your single bolts here ends up here with your spacer. That's how you can put it back together. On the Fords and some other vehicles, they have this T-bar. This T-bar, as the truck sits, has a certain angle on it, it travels. So when you try to put this and you're 180 out, the degree is off at the bottom. So what we've done before, take that. Right 
right down on there. You just take your studs. Rotate it slightly the other direction. And we'll be good to go. So then we'll be able to put this back in the vehicle. Because we had one side spacer in and one side out, sway bar was still up here where the control arm sat on the other side. So even prying down the sway bar, it would put a lot of tension on the end link. So what we did is we did not put that together yet. Wait till this side comes down with the spacer. Now the sway bar will just go back into place. We tighten this side, go back and tighten the other side. So your last step you're gonna do after the other side's done is put your sway bar end links on. So this backing plate has one notch. Make sure the cable comes through the notch. Otherwise you'll be buying a new ABS cable. Make sure it's tight, but you don't have to be Hercules with that. On the rotor like this, I always keep a lug nut on it. You don't have to, but when you're trying to put the caliper on, rotor will fall, it doesn't go into place. This keeps the rotor isolated and the caliper hangs real nice and easy. Spacers are the budget economy lift and spindles are the uh, best lift. For a two wheel drive installation for a lift, if you have it in your budget and if you want to try to retain the ride, it's also generally a, an easier installation is just doing the uh, lifted spindles. Lifted spindle, you don't have to do anything from the control arm or, or strut assembly. So all you're just working is on the outboard components. You're taking off the wheel, you you're taking off the brake calipers. Do our little caliper stretch. Alright, give us some love. Now, unlike before, we're gonna have to pull this stuff off. So we're gonna take backing plate off. ABS line out. Taking off the wheel hub. So this is your hard line going into a fitting, going into your rubber line to a caliper. Okay, with the brake barrels, we're dropping it down so you don't have to disconnect your line. And that being said, we've got to get this kind of kink out of here. What I do is we've got to work this up. Changing the spindle to a spindle that has the wheel hub engineered lower down on the assembly. From that point, it's pretty much a bolt-on. Generally, lift spindles are the best way to go. And again, if you have them in the budget, you know, they just cost a lot more. Through a lot of the uh, testing and, and R&D that we've done the last couple of years, you know, working on this new line, Hands down, it's the, the spindles are absolutely the best way to lift the vehicle. Just because there's so few drawbacks to it, you know, it, everything's a plus. It looks better, it drives basically like factory. Um, you actually gain ground clearance. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> spindles, spindles are the winner. Did this help you determine the right front lift for your vehicle? Got more questions? Want us to cover something in greater depth? Drop a message in the comments below. Interested in more parts comparisons, vehicle tips, and installer tricks? Like and subscribe to stay notified about the next fun project in the garage.